Now in section 4.2, we're going to talk about the angles of triangles. It's amazing what kind of calculations, things you can determine and find out when you know a little bit about triangles. Um, triangulation uh, in the wilderness, being able to determine where you are, being able to determine how far something is by using similar triangles, being able to, to determine what the angles are between things even though you're not close enough to them to measure it or walk it off in any way, form, or fashion. There's uh, all kinds of things that you can do with triangles uh, in the real world if you know a few of the calculations and ways to do it. And that's what we're going to talk about is uh, how we're going to talk about the angles and the, and the things that we can do with the angles. First thing we need to know is, is something you already know, but we're going to prove it. Triangle is called the triangle angle sum theorem. That's what I call it. And here's the symbols for it, ding, ding, sum, t. And it states, the sum of the measures of the angles of a triangle equal 180 degrees. And I've got my table set up there, and what we're given is we're given a triangle down here. Triangle ABC, and they want us to prove triangle uh, angle 1, measurement angle 1 plus measurement angle 2 plus measurement angle 3 equals 180 degrees. So, let's get started on this. We're given... Number one, we're given triangle ABC, and it's given to us. They wrote it down, gave it to us. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to draw an auxiliary line. We're going to draw that auxiliary line in such a way that it is goes through B, and it has X and Y on it, so we're going to call it auxiliary line X and Y, and it's in parallel to segment AC. So we're going to draw line XY through B parallel to segment AC. And we can do that. We know it's that way because there's only one of them because of the parallel postulate. Okay, so we've done that. Now, we're going to number some angles here. We're going to number this angle over here, angle 4. We're going to number this angle, angle 5. Okay, now the next statement we're going to make is this one. We're going to look at angle 4 here, and then we're going to look at this angle A, B, Y. This one comes right up through here and over here like this, okay? Now, they make a straight line, don't they? They're a linear pair, okay? They're a linear pair. Angle 4 and angle A, B, Y are a linear pair. So angle 4 and angle A, B, Y, R, and LP. Why? Well, definition of linear pair. Two angles that make a straight line, okay? Now, two angles that make a straight line, we also know that that means that angle 4 and angle A, B, Y are supplementary, okay? A linear pair are supplementary, linear pairs are supplementary. Okay? Now, next statement we're going to make is a little strange and different. But we're going to come in here and we're going to look at this and we're going to go like, wow. Angle 4 and angle ABY, they make a straight line, they're linear pair, they're supplementary. That means what? Well, add them together, they equal 180, right? Okay? What else do we know about ABY? It's the sum of angle 2 and angle 5, isn't it? So the measurement of angle ABY equals the measurement of angle 2 plus the measurement of angle 5. And that's just a good old angle addition postulate. It says, wow, I can take two angles, add them together, and I can get a bigger angle. Okay? Now, next thing I want to do is... What do we know about angle 1 and angle 4? 
from our transversals with parallel lines. And angle 3 and angle 5. Well, we know that angle 4 is congruent to angle 1 and angle 5 is congruent to angle 3. Why? Alternate interior angle theorem. Okay? Alright. That also means that because they're congruent, then their measurements, the measure of angle 4 is equal to the measure of angle 1, and the measure of angle 5 equals the measure of angle 3. Why? Definition of congruent angles. Okay? So therefore, we have came back up here, and we know that the measurement of angle 4 plus the measurement of angle A, B, Y equals 180. And that's simply because of the definition of supplementary. But we also know what? What does this equal? 2 and 5, right? And we know that 4 is equal to angle 1, and 5 is equal to angle 3. So we're just simply going to come in here and substitute all that. You ready? So we now can say that measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 plus measure of angle 3 equals 180. Oh, let's do this right. Measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 plus measure of angle... Let's go back here. Yeah, 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 180. And that's simply substitution. And one of the things I said when we were going through transversals and we were going through all those relationships with those angles, I told you that, that all of those things were going to be very important to um, our, everything we, we go through. Okay? We're going to be using these relationships, alternate interior angles, okay? uh, corresponding angles. Uh, same side interior angles. All of those we're going to be using all the way through. Okay? Alright. I think probably we left something out in here. Let's go back and pick it up. Right here. We got this straight. Not that we needed the extra statement, but I think it makes, helps make that a whole lot clearer there. It's basically what we're saying here is because angle 4 and angle ABY are supplementary, then the two of those equal 180. Well, what does ABY equal? It equals the measurement of angle 2 plus the measurement of angle 5. So what we're going to do is measurement of angle 4 plus measurement of angle 2 plus measurement of angle 5 equals 180. Well, we know that what? 4 equals 1 and 5 equals 3, so therefore the measurement angle 1, 2, and 3 equal 180. Triangle angle sum theorem. Proving that the angles of a triangle add up to equal 180 degrees.
Another theorem we use with uh, triangles is what we call the third angle theorem. Pretty simple. If two angles of a triangle are congruent to two angles of a second triangle, then the third angles are also congruent. Pretty simple. Given two triangles, ABC, XYZ, okay, we're given that angle A is congruent to angle Z, and angle C is congruent to angle Y. Now, what they'd like for us to prove is that Angle B is congruent to angle X. Well, let's do a couple of things over here. They're pretty simple. We are given, if we're given this, then we know that definition of congruent angles. This is true and this is true. Their measurements are equal. And because of the triangle angle sum theorem, we know that the sum of the angles of this triangle equal 180. Sum of the angles of this triangle equal 180. Well, both of them equal 180, then they equal each other. So let's set them equal to each other. Sum of angle A plus sum of angle B plus sum of angle C equals the sum of angle X plus the sum of angle Y plus the, sum, the measure of angle Z. Okay, so all these measurements added together equals the measurements of the other triangle. It's always going to be true. Why? Because all the measurements together, one triangle equals 180. But we also know that what? This measurement equals that. So, ABC over here, X, we don't have a substitute for that, but for Y, we have C. And for Z, we have A. So therefore, when we take out the columns, we subtract the measurement of angle A from both sides, and the measurement of angle C from both sides, what are we left with? The measurement of angle B equals the measurement of angle X. Well, if two measurements are equal, what do we know about those angles? By the definition of congruent angles, they are congruent. Okay, so we've proven that, guess what? Angle B is congruent to angle X. Let's put three there to make sure we got that down right. Okay. Third angle theorem. This theorem on angles is uh, pretty important. It will save you an awful lot of time on tests. If you can remember this, it will also come in handy on quizzes and there will be some questions on tests. It will save you an awful lot of time if you can remember this. And it's really actually very simple. It makes a lot of sense and we'll show you why. It's called the exterior angle theorem. The exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of its remote interior angles. Whoa, wait a minute. There's some definitions here we don't know. Like what's interior angles, what's exterior angles? Well, it's pretty simple to make that happen. The interior angles are the ones on the inside. Here we've got them labeled angle 1, 2, and 3. They're the interior angles. Now, exterior angles for a triangle are a little different. We draw this one by coming down this way. That's angle 4. Draw this one by coming up this way, that's angle 5. Draw this one coming down this way, that's angle 6. Now 4, 5, and 6 are exterior angles. Why? Because they are exterior to the triangle. Okay, now, the remote interior angles for angle 4 are 2 and 3. Notice that they're the ones that they don't touch. Angle 4 can touch angle 1. So it can't touch 2 and 3, so they are the remote interior angles for angle 4. Okay, they're opposite that. And angle 1 and 3 are the remote interior angles for angle 5, and angle 1 and 2 are the remote interior angles for angle 6. So they are the angles that are opposite, not setting that. Put it like this. If it makes a linear pair, then it's not a remote interior angle. 1 and 4 is a linear pair. Therefore, one can't not be remote interior angle for angle four. Okay? Those are the definitions you need to remember. It's remote interior angles are opposite it. Okay? So let's see how we, and this is what the, the theorem says. Angle four is equal to the measurement of angle two plus measurement of angle three. Angle five is equal to the measurement of angle one plus measurement of angle three. And measurement of angle six is equal to the measurement of angle one plus measurement of angle two. Now, let's look at a simple lined out proof of this. This is not formal, but be ready to prove this in a quiz. Be a nice little quiz. Be a nice little quiz to see whether or not you've been paying attention to the videos and been doing what you're supposed to be doing. 
and learning this stuff. What do we know about the measurement angle 1 plus measurement angle 4? They're a linear pair. Oh, you're accountable for all those angle relationships that we started learning way back the first week of school. Okay, you're accountable for that. Angle 1 and angle 4 are a linear pair. What's the definition of a linear pair? Two angles that create a straight line. Okay? What's a straight line? It's an angle with 180 degrees. And the angles, two, two angles that create an angle of 180 degrees are supplementary, so forth and so on. So we know that their measurements are what? 180, that's because they are a linear pair through definitions and theorems. Now we also know that angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 equals 180. Why? Because that's the triangle angle sum theorem that we just went over. The internal interior angles of a triangle added together equal 180. Now, so if both of these equal 180, we can set them equal to each other through substitution. So the measurement angle 4 plus the measurement angle 1 equals measurement angle 1 plus measurement angle 2 plus measurement angle 3. Now, what's common to both of those? Well, let's subtract it from both sides. That's just algebra. You can do anything I want to to an equation as long as I do it to both sides. So we're going to subtract the measurement of angle 1 because it represents a number. Measurement of angle 1 from both sides. And when we do that, what are we left with? We're left with the measurement of angle 4 equals the measurement of angle 2 plus the measurement of angle 3. Well, guess what we're trying to prove? Now, can we go through and do it for the other two? Yes. Okay. Once you see that and once you understand it, it's pretty simple. The interior angles add up to make 180. This linear pair adds up to make 180. Well, then if I pull angle 1 out of the equation, this angle has to equal the sum of those two. It has no choice. It has to equal that. Okay. That is exterior angle theorem of triangles. Now let's look at uh, two more relationships with angles and triangles. Two corollaries that we have. The acute angles of a right triangle are complementary. It's pretty common sense, but let's look at them. We've got triangle ABC with C. Measurement of angle C is 90 degrees. Why? It's our right angle. We know that the measurement angle A plus measurement angle B plus measurement angle C equals 180. So we have that. We know that the measurement angle C equals 90. Well, let's just replace that measurement angle C with 90. So measurement angle A plus measurement angle B equals plus 90 degrees equals 180. Let's subtract the 90 degrees from both sides. The measurement of angle A plus the measurement angle B equals 90 degrees. That's the definition of complementary. Therefore, the two acute angles of a right triangle are going to be complementary. That way you can shortcut your your equations and your calculations, you don't have to. If you have a right triangle, you don't have to add the three angles up to equal 180. You can simply add the two acute angles up to equal what? 90 degrees. Either way, you're going to get the same answer. Now, the other one is uh, sort of common sense, but you've got to think about it. And the way we're going to look at this is we're going to prove it wrong. Therefore, what we're saying has to be correct. There can be at most one right or obtuse angle in a triangle. But you can't have two right angles in a triangle. Why? Because uh, you don't have a triangle. You have some other kind of figure. You cannot have two obtuse angles in a triangle. Why? you got some other kind of figure. Well, let's look at it. we got a triangle down here. We're going to say that two of the angles are right angles. We're going to say that Angle B and C are both 90 degrees. Well, we know that measurement angle A plus measurement angle B plus measurement angle C equals 180. We also have down here that measurement angle B, measurement angle C equal 90. So let's put the 90s in there. When we do the arithmetic, what happens? We come up with measurement angle A with zero. What do we got? Well, that gives you a straight line, doesn't it? The measurement angle A equals zero. There's nothing there. That means this line has to come all the way over there, and it, just, it doesn't work, does it? It's not there. Okay? So therefore, we know there can only be one. Now let's try another one where we have an obtuse triangle, and let's put two obtuse angles in there. Well, let's put two very small obtuse angles, 91 degrees. Greater than 90 degrees, less than 180. So let's put those in there. Measurement angle XY plus measurement angle Y plus measurement angle Z equals 180. 
We have down here that x and y are both equal to 91, so let's replace those with 91. We come up with 182 plus the measurement angle z equals 180. Let's subtract 182 from both sides. We end up with the measurement angle z equals a negative 2. Huh? We don't know what that means right now. How can I do that? Well, in some strange, weird math sense, it might make sense somewhere. But not for this triangle. We don't have a triangle. We've got two obtuse angles. It just doesn't make sense. Okay? Questions. What happens there? All right? So these are common sense things that will keep us out of trouble when you think about them and when you understand them. Welcome to the angles of triangles. Now there's all kinds of uh, problems we can do with these, applying these uh, principles and theorems to the triangles, and that's what we're going to be doing just about the rest of the year.